The Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with Bo Jangles of Harlem. number one reason for putting wax on your floors, furniture, and woodwork? It's for protection, to guard these surfaces against wear and dirt, make them last longer, save on costly refinishing. The rich, mellow beauty that Johnson's Wax gives is really an extra dividend, and so are the many hours of work that you save when your things are wax protected. The next time you apply a coat of Johnson's Wax to your floors or tabletop or leather goods, remember that you are only doing what nature has always done. Did you know that when you rub a red apple and it shines, you have merely buffed up a waxed surface? That's true. And man, throughout the ages, in protecting his things with wax, has merely imitated nature. Today, Genuine Johnson's Wax, paste or liquid, has a special role to play in helping you to take better care of your things, making them last longer, protecting their beauty. The squire of 79 Wistful Vista is a man of instant decision. He decides important questions in a flash, just like that. Of course, he may not do anything about it right away, but he decides quickly. For instance, a problem has just come up that, uh, but maybe you'd better hear about it from Fibber McGee and Molly. So I says to myself, I says, look, McGee, I says... The country's got plenty of fuel oil and coal, I says, but they got a problem of distribution, I says. Transportation. Well, I asked myself, what can I do about it personally? And that made me sore. <laughs> Don't be so stupid, I says to myself. Well, one of these days you'll get so mad at yourself, you won't speak to you for days. <laughs> well, I almost did this time. Well, I says, looking myself right in the eye, which was kind of hard to do because there's a wobbly place in that hall mirror. <laughs> Well, you've got to convert our furnace back to coal burner, I says. Because coal is going to be easier to get in this locality than fuel oil. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. Where's my pipe wrench? <laughs> you didn't have a pipe wrench. Huh? No, you barred it from Mr. Toops and I gave it back to him. You never smoke a pipe anyway. <laughs> oh, I see. I don't smoke a pipe, so you give away my pipe wrench. <laughs> Well, will you permit me to keep my monkey wrench if I go out and buy a monkey? <laughs> now, don't be ridiculous. Besides, I don't think you can change our furnace from oil to coal by yourself anyway. Is that so? Why, it's a cinch, Mrs. McGee. Or it would be if you didn't play Mrs. Santa Claus with all my equipment. Well, I guess it serves me right for not putting a padlock on my tool chest, I guess. You had one on it once, remember? Huh? And I could never get you to fix anything because you could never find the key to the padlock. I didn't, I didn't need a key. All I had to do was hit it a whack with a hammer and it would fly open. Well, then why didn't you do it? I couldn't. The hammer was in the tool chest. <laughs> Look, dearie, uh, why don't you call the Wistful Vista Furnace Company? They changed our furnace from coal to oil. They could change it back again very simply. No, sir. I'm strictly a guy that likes to do things with his own hands. That's how I'm going to have to do it, too. Now you've given all my tools away. <laughs> no, I didn't give them away. I gave them back. Anyway, we're getting off the subject. What subject? Our furnace. What's the matter with it? You're going to change it back from oil to coal. I am? Who said? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I better get started. Hand me a cigar in the morning paper, will you? What for? Well, i got to read what the weather's going to be. 
The paper doesn't tell what the weather's going to be, McGee. In wartime, it just tells what the weather was yesterday. That's all right. I intended to change the furnace yesterday. <laughs> anyway, I got to sit down a while and figure out exactly what to do. You see, the efficient way to do something... Who's that? Oh, it's probably one of the neighbors come to get his hacksaw back. That hacksaw is mine. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. The guy I borrowed that from moved away from here years ago. <laughs> That's different. Come in. Hello there, daughter. Hello, Johnny. Hello, Mr. Oldtimer. Hi, short, dark, and weather beaten. What's on your mind? Heard the news, kid? Yes, we heard. St. Louis won. I uh, don't mean that, daughter. Circus is coming to town next week. Thought maybe Johnny here wanted to go down there with me and carry water for the elephants. <laughs> Who, me? No, thanks. Never again for me. I tried it a couple of years ago. Didn't they give you a free ticket? Yes, they did, Mr. Oldtimer, but McGee was so tired from carrying water, he slept through the whole performance. <laughs> Besides, circuses don't thrill me anymore. I traveled with one once, you know. You did, Johnny? What doing? Remember that act where the guy rides the bicycle across the tight wire, 65 feet in the air, with a beautiful gal on each shoulder? Bowie, was that you, Johnny? No, but it was my bicycle. <laughs> Rented a tomb for a buck a day. <laughs> That's moderately amusing, Johnny. But I hear an interesting variation of it. <laughs> variation I hear. One fella says, the other fella says, he says, Mrs. Roosevelt ain't traveling as much as she used to, is she? How can she, queries color character? I hear Mr. Wilkie's borrowed her suitcase. <laughs> Go to the circus, eh, Johnny? No, he doesn't, Mr. Oldtimer. He has work to do around the house. I'm converting our furnace back to burning coal, Oldtimer. Is that so? Yep. Going back to coal for the duration, eh? Yes, we are. Good for you, daughter. You won't regret it. There's no fuel like an old fuel, is what I always say. <laughs> <laughs> 72 vertical. Hey, McGee, I thought you were going to work on the furnace. I am, I am. I'm just getting set for it. Does working crossword puzzles put you in the mood for it or something? Why, certainly. Sharpens the wits, steadies the nerves, stimulates the ingenuity. Whenever I have a big job of work to do, I always start with a few crossword puzzles. Got to develop my mind along with my muscles, you know. Well, the way you sit around on your muscles all day, you'll wind up very broad-minded. Ah, I fixed that up. Here. Yes, sir. Say, after you change the furnace so it'll burn coal again, you might weather strip the doors and windows, too, did it? The tighter the house is, the less fuel we'll have to burn. Ah, the windows fit tight enough. No, they don't. Our dining room windows have a draft that would take married men with seven children. <laughs> Tales, 
Okay, I'll take care of it. But I could do a better job if you didn't give away all my tools. I didn't give them away. I merely returned them to their rightful owner. Well, just the same. Come in. Well, for goodness sakes, Abigail Luffy. How do you do, my dear? And Mr. McGee. And a warm wiggle of the pinky to you, Luffy. <laughs> what do you see in the tea, kid? I beg your pardon? He means what goes, Abigail? What's cooking? What do you hear from the mob? <laughs> sure. Tie a handle on the scandal. Give out of what's what's fresh from the wreck. <laughs> what's the good word, Sue? Uh, do I gather, Mr. McGee, that you're asking me what I know that is new? That's it, Abigail. She's Hep McGee. Yeah. She's no sticky little licky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm afraid I don't know anything startling, my dear. But I am entering Phoebe, my Pekingese, you know, in the dark show today. And I wondered if you'd care to go with me. It's for the benefit of the USO, you know. Uppy, do you mean to stand there in the middle of your minx and tell us that you're finally exposing little Fifi to a rude association with Tom and Canine? I think it'll do Fifi good, McGee. She sees too much of people and not enough of other dogs. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought, my dear. It's bad enough for a person to lead a dog's life, but when a dog leads a person's life, oh, that's horrible. I'm afraid Molly can't go with you, Uppy. I'm changing our furnace from an oil burner back to a coal burner. Fuel conservation, you know. Well, can't you work without Mrs. McGee here? He can, but he probably won't. <laughs> Are you changing the furnace all by yourself, Mr. McGee? Yep, with my own little chubby hands, Uppy. <laughs> oh, my, how clever of you. Well, Fifi will be tremendously disappointed, Mrs. McGee. I'm sorry you can't go with me. Well, I am too, Abigail. And I do hope that Fifi wins the diamond-studded pork chop or whatever the prize is. Oh, well, thank you. I'm sure she'll take a ribbon at least. Oh, well, don't worry about that, Uppy. A funny-looking mutt like Fifi is bound to take a little ribbon. <laughs> Please, Mr. McGee. Fifi is definitely not a mutt. She is a direct descendant of champion Hook. That's in the people of herd of both <laughs> oh, dear you. And now, about your furnace, Mr. McGee. Yeah? Why, may I ask, do you squander your mechanical genius in converting a furnace from oil to coal when you personally have been so richly endowed by nature with a substitute for both? <laughs> what substitute? Hot air. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> I often wondered how you'd look with your ears pinned back, McGee. <laughs> it's very becoming. Boy, she was really peeved, wasn't she? Did you see her draw herself up to her full width? <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, listen, it's about time you stopped talking about that furnace and began doing something about it. Better get into some old clothes. You gave all my old clothes away to the Red Cross, remember? I'll put on my coveralls. Say, I gave your coveralls away, too. You wore them fishing all summer, and they were adding no charm whatsoever to the atmosphere around here. <laughs> Well, I can't work around the furnace in my good clothes. I'll have to run downtown and get me a pair of coveralls. Got to get me a pipe wrench and some stuff anyway. Now, don't buy all the tools in the hardware store. You don't need them. <laughs> Heavenly days, I could do the job myself with a bobby pin and a stick of chewing gum. What flavor? Peppermint. What old what difference does it make? Now, hurry along so you'll be back in time for... Hello, folks. Oh, hi, Harlow. Molly, you remember our Mr. Wilcox. He's the fellow that didn't used to have that mustache. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Don't mind McGee. He envies you that mustache. I do not. Yes, you do, you rascal. You've tried a dozen times to raise one like Ronald Coleman, and it always wound up looking like a race between two caterpillars. <laughs> <laughs> well, he looks better with a bear face anyway, Molly. And I need mine in my work. What do you mean, Junior? Well, I'm sensitive. And it helps me keep a stiff upper lip when I see dusty, cracked, neglected-looking linoleum that could be given a new lease on life with the treatment of Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. I see what you mean. Why don't you go all the way and raise a beard, too, Wilcox? <laughs> Why a beard, pal? So when you meet a housewife who isn't familiar with how glow coat saves hours of housework and preserves her linoleum in these times when it's so important to conserve everything we have... When you meet a gal who doesn't know how easy it is to use Johnson's glow coat, how it shines as it dries in 20 minutes or less... But why a beard, McGee? Well, when he meets somebody that don't know about glow coat, his face is going to fall so far he's going to need a cushion under his chin. <laughs> well, that's a great idea, Fibber, but it isn't necessary. I don't think there is anybody who hasn't heard about glow coat. Oh, now you just say that. Say, by the way, Mr. Wilcox, have you got a suit of coveralls that McGee could borrow? Something in a draped shape with a wreath pleat and a stuffed cuff? 
<laughs> no, I haven't any coveralls. Don't need them. Demonstrating glow coat is so clean and simple. Yes, yes, we know, we know. McGee is converting our furnace from oil to coal, Mr. Wilcox. You know, fuel conservation. Oh, yes. Uh, did you check up to see which was best for this locality, Fibber? Why, certainly I did. You think I'm that dumb? Oh, at least. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be running along now, folks. Nice to see you. <laughs> Him and his scraggly little mustache. I've drawn better mustaches than that on magazine covers. <laughs> I drew one on Veronica Lake. Oh, oh McGee. <laughs> you gotta get busy now. We'll have a cold snap any day now, and you've got to have the furnace ready. Okay, okay. I'll go down to the Bonton department store and get me some cover off. All right, but don't be gone long. I'll go upstairs and see which windows need weather stairs. Okay, now let's see. Coveralls, pipe wrench, sledgehammer. Settling torch. <laughs> Dinner bucket. <laughs> Case I work late and need a midnight snack. <laughs> Pair of cotton gloves. Oh, now what? Come in. Hi, mister. Oh, hello there, little girl. I can't stop and talk with you now. I gotta run downtown and buy me some coveralls. Mm -hmm. I says I gotta run downtown and buy me some coveralls. Why? Because I got a job to do and I don't want to get my clothes dirty. I'm going to convert our furnace from an oil burner to a coal burner. Why? Why, 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 why? Is that all you can say? No. Well, then say something else. Why? Now, <laughs> look, sis, I'm a busy man. I got work to do. You might almost say it's for the government. Why? <laughs> and don't ask me why. I'll tell you why. Because the government wants people to conserve fuel. Fuel what? What do you mean, fuel what? You mean if you'll do it, the government will be glad, hmm? <laughs> Sis, if there's any bad puns to be made around here, I'll make them. What's a pun? A pun is a play on words. Oh, my baby brother does it all the time. Ah! <laughs> Don't give me that celery salt, sis. Your baby brother can't even talk. How could he make puns? Well, gee, he plays on words, I bet. Now, uh, how could your baby brother he, play? We, we, we put a dictionary on his high chair and he sits there and plays patty cake. Look, sis, you better run along. I gotta go downtown. Why does the government want you to fix your furnace, mister? Oh, I'll break it down for you, sis. In wartime, the Army and Navy and factories need all the oil and coal they can get, see? So the ordinary citizen has to try and use a little less. Hmm. I bet you you're an awful ordinary citizen, too, I bet. <laughs> well, I certainly... Huh? Oh, <clears throat> Then we got a transportation problem, sis. Oh. Trains and boats are needed for hauling soldiers and supplies. So we got to cooperate and use whatever fuel is handiest. Oh. And the supply of oil being a little shorter than coal, the government wants us to change over our oil burners to coal burners wherever possible. Oh. So I'm doing it. You understand? Sure I do, I betcha. Well, good for you, sis. That's a wonderful tribute to the logical way I explain things. <laughs> Natural result of clear thinking. I know it. My daddy says you're one of the most open-minded men he ever knew. Oh, oh, he did, huh? He should. Oh. And he says it's a good thing, too. <laughs> because if anybody's mind ever needed air or not, yours does. <laughs> the King's Men sing, I Got a Touch of Texas. Good job. 
I thought if the Yankees had one more chance, they might win. <laughs> now, here's my coveralls. See, they fit like a glove. And here's some canvas gloves. I suppose they fit like a coverall. <laughs> now, look, McGee, while you were gone... And look at the tools I bought. There. The heavenly day. Uh, a one-man defense plan. Uh, but what just, I want... Just, just heft this hammer one. Ain't that got a beautiful heft? I'd like to heft your checkbook and see if that has. You don't need all those tools, dearie. Anybody would think that... Come in. Thank goodness. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Hello, Mr. McGee. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Wimple. Hi, Wimp, old man. Well, you're looking good. Nice color in your cheeks. Been out for a walk? No. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Sweetie Face is responsible for my cheeks being so pink. <laughs> She's been teasing me. Oh. It's because you've been blushing then, huh? No. But all day long, Sweetie Face has been saying, Oh, Wallace, you sweet little thing. And then she'd pinch my cheek. Ah, uh, with a coy little smile, eh? No, uh, with a big pair of pliers. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Mr. Wimple, how could she do such a thing? Oh, easily, Mrs. McGee. She takes me by the back of the neck with one hand, with the pliers in the other. No, 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 no. <laughs> My wife means, how could she have the heart to do it, Wimp? Or hasn't she got a heart? Of course she has, Mr. McGee. Sweetie Face has a heart as big as all outdoors. <laughs> I guess that's why she never brings it in the house. <laughs> Say, how'd your wife ever get so strong, Mr. Wimple? In vaudeville, Mrs. McGee. Vaudeville, eh? Oh. What was she, one of Powers' elephants? Oh, no. She had a wonderful act. She used to play the Carnival of Venice on the cornet with one hand and keep time on a punching bag with the other. <laughs> That's where I first met her. I joined the act in Sioux City. Oh, as a cornet player? No, punching bag. <laughs> well, I've got to run along now, folks. Goodbye. <laughs> I know what killed vaudeville. It was Sweetie Face. <laughs> you know, I used to love vaudeville, McGee. I never missed a performance in Peoria. Me either. I fell in love with Eva Tangway when I was 13. <laughs> <laughs> That's nothing. I wanted to marry the Weaver brothers when I was 12. <laughs> it would have been bigamy, but love conquers all. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't the truth. I remember once when York and King... Oh, but hey, I got to get busy on the furnace. Oh, yes, about the furnace, McGee. Ah, I... uh, come in. Oh, Mayor Latrivia. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Good evening, McGee. Hi, Latrivia. How's all the committees in our gritty little city? If you mean how are things going with our municipal government, McGee, they're going splendidly. Though my interest may be short-lived. Oh, you're not resigning as mayor. On the contrary, Mrs. McGee, I'm seriously considering running for governor. Uh, this is confidential, incidentally. Oh, we can keep a, we can keep a secret, Latrivia. Personally, I buy 12 blue hats a year just to keep things under <laughs> when are you going to renounce your nomination? Uh, possibly in the spring. Some of the most influential men in the state met at my house last evening to discuss the matter. Yes, we oh. heard them as we walked by, didn't we, dearie? I'll say we did, Latrivia. Quite a raucous little caucus. <laughs> really? Well, I didn't realize we were being so obtrusive. I'm sorry. But my nomination was agreed upon.
on nominee contra dissente. Uh, what was that again, Mr. Mayor? Nominee contra dissente, without a dissenting vote. It's a Latin phrase. You mean you had to talk Latin to those guys? <laughs> Certainly not. I didn't have to. Well, personally, if you have to consult a bunch of foreigners to see if you can run for governor, I they think... They weren't it. foreigners, <laughs> They were all American citizens. Don't give us that stuff, La Trivia. If they were all Americans, you wouldn't have to talk Latin to them. I didn't use Latin at the meeting. Would have been Greek to them. And what's wrong with the Greeks? Nothing. <laughs> They're wonderful people. Now, flattery won't get you any place, La Trivia. Now, what was it, Greek or Latin? It was both. I mean, it was neither one. We only spoke English. I think the FBI better be notified about this, Molly. When a gang of politicians have to meet secretly and talk things over in three different languages. But I tell you, there weren't three different languages. Nobody spoke anything but English. If I choose Latin, it would have been Greek. I mean, if anything but English would have been Never spoken, mind, been... Mr. Mayor. You did right by telling us about this. If a bunch of foreigners are trying to get control of our state politics... But they're not foreigners. I'm one of them myself. I will Oh, so you admit it. Yes. I mean, no. I mean, yes. I mean, no. I mean, I'm not a foreigner. Just because I use one Latin phrase... Do the Greeks understand Latin? Of course. I mean, no. Oh, why do you ever try to explain things to you people? Why do I have... Oh, McGee. <laughs> huh? What's that on the floor in front of you? Where? I don't see anything. Oh! Hey, what's the idea? Oh, nothing. Just such a pleasure to see you. Stoop! <laughs> Why, that dirty. Did he kick you hard, McGee? No, but he didn't have any business kicking me at all. We were just kidding him. Him and his Latin. Can't he take a joke? He can take it and then he can dish it out, too. <laughs> now put those tools in your coveralls away and get washed up for supper. Oh, no, I gotta get started to work on that furnace. Though, no, I... no, you don't. Huh? I don't? No. I called the Whistle Vista Furnace Company while you were gone and they did it in an hour. You mean the furnace it's is all... It's all taken care of. It is? Well, Simeon Norum Avuncularis. What does that mean? That's another Latin phrase meaning I'll be a monkey's uncle. In these days when all of us are called upon to put forth an extra effort, we certainly don't want to add unnecessary work in the home. And yet, it's imperative to take extra good care of the things we have. May I remind you of the many uses for Johnson's Wax? For instance, just try wax polishing your tabletops, window sills, Venetian blinds, leather goods with Johnson's Wax, the same wax you use on your floors. Notice first how beautiful these wax surfaces are. The coat of wax acts as a shield against dust, dirt, and wear. Fingerprints and smudges are quickly wiped away. Experts call the regular use of Johnson's Wax protective housekeeping. It will pay you to adopt it in your home. Ask for the original, genuine Johnson's Wax, available in paste, liquid, or cream wax form. Gee, I wish you'd let me do that work on the furnace, Molly. Why? Oh, I love to do jobs like that. I was raring to go. Why, when I get a chance to do some handiwork, every nerve in my body quivers. I know, dearie, and I've always admired it. My handiwork? No, your nerve. <laughs> oh, good night. Good night, all. Characters of Wallace Wimble and the old timer heard on this program were played by Bill Thompson. This is Marlowe Wilcox speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Finishes for Home and Industry, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This program reached you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>